the challenge of the Yukon. King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> As Sergeant Preston pulled into Cass City, a sharp wind cut alongside the frame building that sheltered the group of men standing in its protection. So deep were they in conversation, the curious passers-by joined them and in turn were caught up in a heated discussion. Ah, I tell you, all I had to see was them prints. Ain't nobody in the Yukon with feet that big. But why did Ben Barton want to kill Matt Lawson? Don't make much sense to ah. me. I heard Ben tell Lawson he'd get him when they had that fight in the cafe yesterday afternoon. He sure didn't waste much time. Hey, here comes Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston! Hey, Sergeant Preston! Hello, King. Oh, you husky. That's a good thing he's here. Hello, boys. What's the meeting about? Oh, ain't you heard? Matt Lawson was murdered. Murdered? Yep. Out on Wishbone Creek. You might just as well get ready for another shock, Sergeant. I can't believe it. Who'd murder Matt Lawson? Uh, Matt had his enemies, all right. But your friend Big Ben Barton is the man that done it. Why, Will, Ben wouldn't. Sergeant, we know Ben's your friend. But that ain't gonna save him now. Now, wait a minute, Will. If Ben's guilty, he'll be punished. The law doesn't recognize friendship when a crime's been committed. But what evidence have you? You can't make a statement like that, you know, without proof. We got proof, all right. You're darn tootin'. No one else in the Yukon wears shoes the size of Ben's. Now, do they, Sergeant? Well, no, I guess they don't. Ben's about the biggest man in the Yukon. Well, the prints that was found in the snow are Ben's. No. Yep. He might have saved your life, but he took Matt Lawson's sure as there's a sun in the sky. And prints are as plain as day. No, sir. That noose is as good as around his neck right now. Not so fast. Noose isn't around anyone's neck. Yet. What time was Matt killed? Any of you know that? Well, we know this much. He was killed after 10 o'clock last night. After 10, huh? Yep. The snow stopped falling about 10, you see. So it'd have to be after that, else the prince wouldn't be there so plain. Mm-hmm. Well, men, that should take the finger of suspicion from Ben. Well, how do you figure, Sergeant? Because Ben was with me last night from 9.30 till about 8 this morning. Well, what's wrong with you, men? <laughs> well, I hate to say it. I never thought... Neither did I, Will. Will? Sam? You might be the law up here, but by golly, Sergeant, if you aim to let Barton know... We'll take the law in our own hands. That's what we'll do. You can see how we feel about it. If you men do that, you'll be guilty of murder yourselves. I promise you this. If you're right, there won't be any need to take the law in your hands. But first, we've got to make sure an innocent man isn't punished for a crime he didn't commit. Well... You've got to give Ben a chance. I'll stay in Cass City till we find who murdered Matt Lawson. You'll have to find some way to explain them prints. We'll have to find an explanation for a lot of things. Come on, King. We've got work to do. Get the dogs up. I'll see you men later. All right. Goodbye. Bye. On King! On you Huskies! <laughs> When Sergeant Preston left the small group of men, he headed his team for Big Ben Barton's cabin, further north toward the edge of Cass City. Yeah, I hope he's there. I've got to talk to him. Ho, King! Ho, you husky! All right, King. Come on, fella. We'll see if Ben's inside. Sergeant Preston, am I glad to see you. Hello, Ben. I'm anxious to see you, too. Well, come on inside. Hi there, King. Well, I guess you heard. Yes, that's why I hurried to see you. I, 
I don't know what to do. Now, Ben, listen. I know you didn't kill Matt Lawson. He just sold in Cassidy, do you believe me? I, uh, I just saw Will Stringer and some of the men. I can guess pretty much what they told you. Yes. Well, I'm your prisoner. But I tell you, I didn't do it. Ben, it's a frame-up. If only I hadn't had that fight with Matt. What fight? Well, yesterday afternoon in the cafe. You know how them things start. I made a bet with Matt about two weeks ago. Well, Matt never was one to pay off his bets. That was why I jumped him. But uh, he was in a mean humor. Seems he was having some trouble with the boundary on his claim or something. He cussed me out right proper. Hmm. I uh, didn't want to get in any gunplay with him, so I left the cafe. Only when I was leaving, I told him he'd pay me or else. Well, that was bad. Under ordinary circumstances, it wouldn't be, but... With the way things are now, I meant I'd collect that money. Chucks, you can't collect any money from a dead man. Well, money ain't much good to me now. Who heard that fight? Well, let's see. Will Stringer was in the cafe, and Snyder, Harkins was there. You know, the same bunch. Yep, with my luck, they was all there, and every one of them heard us arguing. So they're basing their opinion on that argument as much as the footprints, eh? Yep. The footprints is a thing. But how could I be at Wishbone Creek and with you at the same time? Well, they won't believe me, Ben. Because we're friends, I think... Why, that... the dirty old down bunch of farmers say I don't know you're straight as it come <laughs> out. Still the same old Ben, aren't you? With more trouble of your own to think of than ever, and you're... Well, you'll still fight for a friend. Well, Sergeant, you know how it is. Why, we've been friends for a long time. I'd rather... I'd rather admit I'd done this thing than have anyone think he was trying to protect me. But gosh darn it, you ain't trying to protect me. It's the truth. Who could have been wearing your shoes? Huh? Who could have been wearing your shoes? They were your footprints, were they? Well, they were the prints of my shoes, if that's what you mean, Sergeant. I wasn't in them. Most men in the Yukon have only one pair of boots, but you... With me, it's so hard for me to get shoes to fit that when I see an extra pair, I buy them up quick. Well, let me see your shoes. I want to see every pair you have. Uh, my shoes? <coughs> sure. Mind if I ask what you want them for? Well, I don't know exactly. Except that I want to see if they've been worn lately. Here they are. I'll drop one of them. That's a lot of them. Don't own another pair except what I got on. Which shoes were you wearing last night? Well, the ones I got on. You're sure? Sure, I'm sure. Took them off last night beside my bed and put them on there this morning. Well, it wouldn't be hard for someone to sneak up here and borrow a pair and then put them back, would it? I reckon not. I'm in and out of my cabin a lot, and the mud around here has been walked on too much to show any new footprints. And... Uh, let's see now. No, not these. Hmm. What do you see there? Yeah, these shoes are wet. These are the shoes the murderer wore last night. And he stepped in one of the mud holes. They're wet inside as well as out. Well, I'll be... Wet and muddy. Ben, these shoes may prove your innocence. How can they do that? I'll get my knife out. Do you mind losing a pair of shoes? Not if they'll save my neck, I don't. Yeah. We'll soon know whether they will or not. Yeah, these shoes are well put together. Almost a shame to cut them apart. Yeah, yeah now we'll soon know it. Mm-hmm. Just as I thought. Hey, look here. What? Here. Here's the footprint of the man who wore these shoes when he killed Matt Lawson. Say, then that proves... This proves that we're looking for a man much smaller than you are. Well, that foot sure a lot shorter than mine. Oh, uh, he'd be, yeah, let's see, about six feet tall. I'd say about 180 pounds. Well, it might be almost any one of a dozen. Yes, yes, that's true. Now, what we want to do is line up the men who might have wanted to kill Matt. Then fit the print of their foot to the print in his shoe. Yeah, but... Uh, but who'd be likely to kill him? Well... Who'd have the chance to pin the crime on you? Someone was in the cafe yesterday and heard that argument. Yeah, but there was a crowd there. You can't... We want go... Matt out of the way. Come on, Ben, think. Well, there's Sam Snyder, 
old Matty heap of money. He was in the cafe? Yep. And uh, Harry Knight, but him and Matty had been friendly for years. He wouldn't all of a sudden just Who up else? and... Uh, well, Will Stringer, Will's claims on the same hill match was, but then they was always friendly. And... Any more? No. Listen, it'd be the barkeep, and you know Johnny didn't have nothing to get mad. One thing Matt always paid for was his drinks. Well, that's three men. And I have a hunch that in that three we'll find the man who's trying to frame you, Ben. Early the next day, three men gathered in Ben Barton's cabin at the far edge of Cass City. Will Stringer, Harry Knight, and Sam Snyder. Any one of whom might have murdered Matt Lawson. As soon as I got the message, I came. Yeah, me too. Wonder what that bounty's got up his sleeve. Oh, hard to say. Well, I'll say this much. Barton still ain't under arrest, is he? Wait a minute, Will. Here comes the bounty now. Sorry to keep you men waiting here. Yeah, it ain't no waiting we mind, Sergeant. But what's this all about? Why'd you send for us? Yeah, something happened? I want all you men to step into this mud and walk across the floor on your bare feet. What? That's why I sent for you, Will. <laughs> it's all right with me. I'll try anything. <laughs> Mind if I go first? I'd like to get this over with. Fine. Uh, you fellas take your shoes off, too. Over here, Harry. Right in this mud here. Like this? Yes. Now walk across the bare floor. You ready, Sam? I guess so. First time I ever did this. Can't say a mine, long as you got a reason for it. Will? Oh, I'd like to know what it's all about. Oh? Well, we'll go into that in a few minutes. Over here first, Will. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, that's the lot of you. Now we'll soon know what we want. Well, what do you want to know? I'll just compare these now. Nope. Well, what's that? Looks like part of a shoe. Yes, it is part of a shoe. Part of the shoe the murderer wore when he killed Matt Lawson Tuesday night. You mean Ben didn't wear them shoes? You can't expect us to believe that. Ain't nobody here with feet that big. It isn't unheard of for one man to wear someone else's shoes, is it? Nobody could wear Ben's shoes. Well, for that matter, the shoes wouldn't necessarily have to fit the man wearing them. The man who killed Matt wore these shoes. When he wore them, he forgot one thing. You see, he stepped into several of the deep mud holes around here. The water and mud went down into the shoes. So that when he stepped out of them, the print of his foot was left in them. Say now. One of the footprints on the floor matches the print in the shoe. Comparing them will tell who murdered Matt and who tried to frame Ben. Well, what are you waiting for? By golly, let's get this thing cleared up. Not so fast. You ain't comparing anything, Preston. Will. Put that gun down, Will. I'm giving the orders around here now. Will, I never... Ah, shut up. up. So that's it, Will. I should have known when Ben told me your claim's in the same hill as Matt's that you'd have a reason for wanting him out of the way. <laughs> now that you know, it ain't going to do you any good. You're under arrest. Oh, you can't talk to a man holding a gun like that, Sergeant. If I have to kill Ollie, I'm going to make... Well, glad you got here, Ben. You're just in time. Shut that door. Now go on. Line up over there with the rest of them. All right, King, out of the Get the gun, sir. Get the gun. I've got one. You get the gun. Good work, Harry. Good work. Uh, Twear nothing after that dog of yours knocked him over. Will, this is the end for you. Oh, that was pretty smart, Sergeant. No, oh, don't mind telling you. I'm already sorry about well, the that's way... That's all right, Sam. Will's conscience gave him away. What do you mean, his conscience? Was them footprints that done it? No, not entirely. You see, the prints on the shoe weren't plain enough to tell which of you three men wore them. Well, I'll be. Yes, King, you deserve some credit, too. The case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>